How do we protect ourselves now from sihah? This is the most important part of the talk. Okay, we want to prevent it. You don't want to have a problem. You've got a problem, you need to go and solve it. What you want to do is prevent the problem from happening in the first place. So first is, in Bukhari it tells us that whoever eats seven dates every morning before eating any food will not be affected by poison, poison or sihr. Okay, so uh, it actually mentions ajwa. So if you can eat seven dates before you eating anything in the morning, ajwa dates, preferably from Medina. If you don't have it, any dates will do inshallah. Uh, apart from Israeli dates, of course. Right? Uh, that is probably, that's not going to protect you. Right? Um, staying in wudu. Staying in wudu is another one. Right? So staying in a state of purity. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu reports that the Prophet said, Purify these bodies. Right? Tahiru hadi al ajsad. And Allah, ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will purify you. There is not a servant who sleeps in a state of wudu, but an angel accompanies him in the sheets. And there is not a moment that he turns in his bed during the night, except the angel says, Oh Allah, forgive your servant, for he has slept in a clean state. It is mentioned in Tabarani with a good uh, chain. So, sleeping, uh, uh, staying in a state of wudu, and especially going to sleep in a state of wudu, one of the, again, like, like I said, the shield, if you're in a state of wudu, that creates a shield around you as well. Then, uh, observing the congregational salah, Salat al um, because uh, this uh, also is a type of protection from shaitan and neglecting it allows shaitan uh, an inroad. And uh, the Abu Darda radiallahu anhu in Bukhari said, I heard the Prophet some said, no three people in a town or countryside who do not observe congregational salah but that shaitan dominates them. Remain with the congregation for the wolf seizes the lone sheep moving away from the flock. So you don't want any uh, opportunity for shaitan to have any influence over your life. And obviously, if shaitan can have influence, then evil jinn are, uh, you know, connect, uh, you know, can also have influence. Next thing is waking at night for salah. Qiyamul Layl. Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu reports that the Prophet was asked about his opinion of a man who slept until Salat al-Fajr without waking up for Qiyamul Layl. He said that is shaitan urinated in the man's ear. This is Abu Dawud. Now, that's somebody who prayed Fajr. What about somebody who doesn't pray Fajr? What's going to happen there? Right? And for us, it's very simple. Look, uh, Fajr begins, what, six, after six, yeah? Even if you get up five minutes before Fajr and pray two rak'ahs, that's it. That's the Hajjad, that's the Qiyam al done. And you wait five, ten minutes, Fajr comes in, pray your Fajr. So it's not difficult if you uh, organize yourself properly. Number five is Adhan. Doing the Adhan, try to get in the habit of doing Adhan in your house. The hadith that says when you do the Adhan, Shaitan runs away. Okay, he comes back, and when you do the Iqamah, he runs away again. And uh, when the Salah comes, then he definitely comes to distract you. Obviously, the Dua when entering the toilet, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubdi wal khabaith. Oh Allah, I seek refuge from you from the male and female Shaitans. This is in Bukhari, so obviously they're in, they're in these kind of places, and so you should seek refuge. These Duas that the Prophet taught us, we have to make an effort to learn them. Okay, there's great protection. There's a dua at the time of sexual intimacy. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu reports to the Prophet said, if you say the following dua during sexual intimacy, okay, a child, and a child is conceived from that, shaitan will not be able to harm that baby. Very simple, short, one line. Okay, it's in Bukhari. Ayat al-Kursi, and as I said, the, the last few surahs, the most important, ikhlas, falak, and nas. These, alhamdulillah, most people will memorize. You, the sunnah, as you read them, you blow in your hands and you wipe your entire body three times. You go to sleep. Ayat al-Kursi as well, reading Ayat al-Kursi. There's a very famous story about Ayat al-Kursi uh, in Bukhari, where Abu Hurairah anhu, was put in charge of certain food in Ramadan. And uh, what happens is, shaitan comes, in the shape of a man and tries to steal some of the food. Abu Huraira catches him the first night. He begs him, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is Shaitan, and he's master of uh, deception. I'm sorry, I'm this, I'm poor, blah, 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 blah. blah. Abu Huraira has, you know, uh, feels sorry for him, lets him go. Next night, so he tells the Prophet ﷺ, somebody came and uh, the Prophet ﷺ says, he's going to come back. So the next night he comes back again. And Abu Huraira says, oh, that's it. I'm not letting you go now because, you know, I knew you were going to come back. He pleads again, he begs and all the rest of it. You know, I've got 10 children, I've got this or that and all the rest of it. He lets him go. The Prophet tells the Prophet, the Prophet says he's going to come back again. Third night he comes back 
Abu Huraira Gazat said, you are not going anywhere, mate. Right? He didn't say mate, but I'm just adding that anyway. <laughs> he grabs him and he says, you're not going anywhere, pal. <laughs> right? So what happens is he pleads. He goes, look, I will tell you something of benefit if you let me go. And this also, Ulama said that look at the, uh, this also indicates the, the hirs or the concern the Sahaba had to learn knowledge. Right? He says, okay. He goes, if you read Ayat al-Kursi, uh, you, Shaitan will not be able to approach you the entire night until the morning. So he says, okay, it's a good benefit. Let's him go. Goes back to tell the, the Prophet Sallam, Prophet did he come? Yeah, he came. But he, he, he taught me this and he said, if I read this, shaitan cannot affect me until the, in the morning. And the Prophet some said, he's a liar, but he told you the truth. He says, you know who you've been talking to for the, talking to for the last three days? A shaitan. Right, so, that's, so now shaitan has told you that. You know, straight from the, was it? The house's uh, mouth of the heart, the mouth, eh? horse's mouth, right? This is straight from shaitan's mouth, right? So he's telling you, you read Ayat al-Kursi and you're going to be safe all night. So how long does it take to read Ayat al-Kursi? Yeah. This also is very important. So after Fajr and after Maghrib, after Fajr and after Maghrib, reading 10 times, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamd wa yumit wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. 10 times. You read this 10 times, Tirmadhi's hadith says, 10 good deeds will be recorded for you, 10 sins eliminated. And 10, you'd upgrade 10 degrees in reward. You'll be safeguarded from all kinds of harm that day. And he will be guarded against shaitan. Look at the investment. A minute. You know, how long does it take? A minute maybe? In the morning, a minute in the evening. And you'll be guarded from shaitan. And no sin can overtake him on that day except associating others with worship of Allah. In other words, shirk. And so also you should do this after maghrib. And then your daily du'as. Du'as, okay? Get something like the Wird Latif of Imam Haddad. Let's go all the du'as of the Sunnah. Get in the habit of doing that. Uh, most importantly, uh, the ones that, are especially for this particular topic, Bismillah, right? Reading that three times in the morning and uh, in the evening. Also, three times in the morning, three times in the evening. This is simple, basic stuff. But it has a great uh, degree of uh, protection. When you leave your house, Bismillah tawakkaltu ala Allah wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. One line again. Look at the hadith in Tirmidhi. It says, when you say it, you will be told without your awareness, you have been guided, you have been sufficed. In other words, your needs are taken care of and you have been protected. And then shaitan will keep away from you. That's it. Step out, you did one, one line. But we don't do these things. Other things which... Um, uh, also, just from practice, have been used, have been found to be useful. Uh, Surah Baqarah, there's a hadith about Surah Baqarah, that um, uh, the, 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 the people of Sihr cannot take Surah Baqarah. So Baqarah, playing Surah Baqarah, and if you can't read it in the house, then play it. We've all got phones, we've all got CDs, especially, especially if you feel there's something there at night time. Just to play Surah Baqarah. Try to memorize at least the, the first beginning, bit, Alif Lam Mim, the first page. Try to memorize the last Amin al-Rasul and obviously Ayat al-Kursi. Try to memorize the last two surahs of uh, two verses of uh, Surah Baqarah. Um, the, there's a little uh, booklet called Manzil, which is like a collection of different um, uh, verses which has been found to be useful against uh, uh, Sihr. So again, it's all Quran. Uh, like I said, strengthen yourself spiritually. Strengthen your Iman because that will create this shield around you, that will protect you. Ibn Qayyim actually says in uh, his book, um, Zad al-Ma'ad, he actually says that when, uh, there's a, the, when, a, when a, a jinn is either trying to possess you or if it's trying to attack you, it's a battle of two entities. So it's like wrestling, right? The, the, the better fighter is going to win. Right? So if it's a weak one and you're stronger, you're going to beat it. But if you're weak and it's stronger than you, then it will overtake you, it will influence you. So the stronger you are, the more likely you are going to be to defeat anything that comes your way. And 
Also, and this is just from uh, ulama that have, 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 have found this to be useful, the word of Imam Nawawi. Imam Nawawi, the, the author who wrote Riyadh al-Salihin, he got Sharh on Sahih Muslim, wrote uh, Majmu' in Shafi Fiqh. Uh, he's got a, a daily litany, daily word that he used to read, and it's been found to be very uh, strong uh, against, uh, uh, against uh, Sihr and Jinn, that they don't like it. Last thing I want to mention is something related, which is Ayn, the evil eye. Now, the evil eye, if you look at Ibn Kathir, he actually mentions, as a, you know, in Surah Yusuf, where it talks about Sayyidina Yaqub, and when he tells his sons to enter Egypt, uh, obviously Yusuf is already there, uh, he tells them to enter from different doors. Now, Ibn Kathir says, some of the ulama have said, that this is because Sayyidina Yaqub feared the Ayn, feared the evil eye for them because they had, they, they, you know, uh, they, they looked good, they were good looking uh, brothers. Also in Surah Noon, uh, right at the end, the last uh, kind of uh, verses, مَنْ يَكَادُوا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَيُزْلِقُونَ كَبِأَبْصَارِهِمْ لَمَّا سَمِعُوا الذِّكْرَ وَيَقُولُونَ إِنَّهُ لَمَجْنُونَ Even though they were bent on denying the truth, but all but kill thee with their eyes. Yeah? So Ibn Abbas and Mujahid and uh, a few other uh, scholars of, uh, of uh, Tafsir, they say that this is a reference to the evil eye of the unbelievers, which was indicative of their jealousy for the Prophet Sallallahu as they hated him, obviously. So this is almost like they wanted to affect him. There's a good discussion of this in uh, Ibn Qayyim's got a book, The Prophetic, Prophetic Medicine. And he talks about, um, you know, there's other, obviously there's lots of other things in the book, but he has got a chapter on the evil eye and how it works. And the way he explains it is, it's almost like um, it's, it comes from within. It's, it's like with the, it's from your inner self, you could see your ruh. And it's kind of almost like um, rays that come out and affect the other person. So Aisha radiallahu anha said the Prophet said, Seek refuge with Allah from the evil eye, for the evil eye is haq, it's reality. That's in Bukhari. Ibn Abbas reported that the Prophet said, The evil eye is a reality, and if anything that could ever race with qadr, destiny, it would have been the evil eye. And if you've been requested to wash your body, then do it so. This is in Muslim. And because of this, and the next hadith, the Aisha reports, the Prophet used to order the person with the evil eye to do wudu and give the used water to the affected person to wash with. So what they say is, although it's, I think it's a bit difficult to do, um, if, it's, if it's known that somebody gave someone the evil eye, then the person who did it, if they wash with uh, water, uh, and they give that water to the other person and they wash with it, it gets rid of the effect of the evil eye. Other ulama just say that you treat it like any other it's got the same symptoms as sihr, and so you just treat it with Quran uh, and so on, and uh, you know the same thing you treat a person who's, who's uh, affected. Um, so uh, the thing with ayn, uh, if it's from a person who's evil, like in terms not evil, but in terms of they're jealous, then it's a very negative, a very negative vibe that comes out. But even sometimes it can happen from somebody who's not who's not a bad person, and this is why the Prophet sallam uh, always told us if you see something which you like, you should try and bless it, right? You should say Masha Allah or anything like that. But if you just um, you know go on about it, it's possible without without intending you could uh, uh, create harm. And Amr ibn Rabi'a uh, affected. I mean, even though Amr was actually one of the people who attended the Battle of Badr, so he's a, he's a great Sahabi. He actually affected Sahal ibn Hunayf with the evil eye. So um, it can happen from. Uh, uh, you know, a normal person, um, not intending anything, but just the, the the intensity of the look, the intensity of the look, because we're not just bodies; we have uh, souls. Now, in terms of uh, further, if you want to take this further, I'd recommend there's a talk on uh, YouTube by Sheikh Hamza Yusuf called "The Devil's Trap." It's not all about sihr, but it's got sihr in there. He mentions it as well, but it's very useful in terms of uh, the information there. And in terms of books. There's one very famous book in uh, Arabic, as uh, al uh, which has been translated. And the translation is called The Sword Against Black Magic and Evil Magicians. And it's available. I think you can get it on the internet. Uh, it gives you a bit more detail. Uh, obviously, every book you agree, some things you agree with, some things you don't. But generally, the information is useful in there. Okay, so we're. Someone's got really bad handwriting. Okay. Uh,
where human hmm, human prophets sent to jinn also did they have their own messengers no uh, the jinn have not got messengers the um, the anbiya that were sent to humans they were also for uh, the jinn so for example um, when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came back from ta'if and he's praying at night this is when um, the beginning of surah jinn talks about nafar nafar is between 3 and 9 uh, jinn heard the quran inna sami'na quranan ajaba we've heard an amazing quran and they become believers and that's the beginning and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to there's a hadith where ibn mas'ud uh, the prophet asks the sahaba do you want to go and see the jinn and like most of us we said no thank you right ibn mas'ud says okay so ibn mas'ud goes with him you may have, may have heard in makkah there's a masjid called masjid jinn this is where this incident took place. So the Prophet ﷺ got there and he made a circle around Ibn Mas'ud. And he said, stay in here. Okay, don't move. And the Prophet, he says, I see the Prophet ﷺ going to the distance and then all of a sudden, all, you know, he's, he's like in a crowd and I can't see him anymore. And then when he comes back, he said that I made an agreement with uh, your brothers of the jinn that um, the bones, okay, that we have, you know, our food, when we have uh, eat meat or something, the bones will be the food of your brothers uh, from the jinn. This is why you can't use these bones for istinja. Uh, you're not supposed to leave them lying about because it attracts them. And also, uh, the dung of your animals will be the dung of their, uh, will be the food of their, fodder of their animals. So, uh, could you explain what is meant by smokeless fire that jinn are made of? Allahu <laughs> a'lam. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Uh, I've not seen them, so. Uh, all we know is what, we, what we're told in the Quran. We're told angels are made of light, that's it, you know, use your imagination. Uh, why do people continue to have pact with the jinns? Well, because well, obviously they want something in return. It's, uh, you know, why do people commit murders? Why do people have crime? Why do people do fraud? You know, because that's the nature of people. They want to get something uh, easily. Uh, cure for potential illness of, uh, of, of sihr. Uh, that book that I mentioned, and someone at Asim said they missed a few things. This record, inshallah, has been recorded so you can watch it again. We'll put it on YouTube. Is anything you missed? Uh, that book mentions all the kind of verses that you need to read, and you need to go on YouTube to be honest, and you get, you know, Qaris have already re re you know read these verses for you. Just either listen to it or read it yourself. If you know anyone who wants who practices black magic, what do you do? Stay away from them, um, <laughs> and make du'a for them to be guided, and don't eat anything that they give you. Uh, or all the du'as you, rec you recited in du'a word latif, yes, all the du'as are there and more. What's the relations, what's the reactions when listening to Rukia, which look, if you're affected, when you listen to that, if you start shaking, you start getting headaches, you start getting sleepy, you start getting dizzy, that's any type of reaction like that. If you had had black magic done in your family before, which did get cured, can it happen again? Yes, it can. And that's why you need to be vigilant. See, the problem with us is we want someone else to do our work for us. You see? So we, we will go to somebody, just write me, write me something, just blow on me, read something on me. You want someone else to do it for you. I'll give you 20 quid in return, that's fine. No, no work for me. And you know what, I remember years ago in Read Ramadan, we were doing a, 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 a discussion show on depression. And so someone called in and, uh, and uh, they said, um, you know, the depressed and stuff. First thing I asked them, do you pray five times a day? No. I said, well, the first thing you need to do is pray five times a day because otherwise it's no surprise you're depressed. And they said, there's no other way around it. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a problem with people, you see, they don't want to put any effort in. I said, listen, I don't have a magic pill, right? I don't have a magic pill. to get. And the same thing with this, read Quran. It's Allah's book, right? It's Allah's book. It brings light into your heart. It brings light into your life, right? Read the Quran, recite it, teach it to your children. Uh, create an, an environment, do the adhan in your house, yeah, do, create an, uh, you know, do something yourself, don't just sit about waiting for other people to do it. So you have to take it upon yourself, do the word Latif, and the first person who's going to benefit is you, and it will protect you as well. Uh, how can a woman who is in uh, menstruational time keep herself protected from evil eye? Well, you can still do word Latif, okay, so word Latif you can still do it, and um, the only thing you can't do is read Quran, but um, if it's for protection like the quls, you can still do that. Aytul Kursi with intention of uh, du'a or protection, you can do that. Fatih with the protection of, of du uh, intention of du'a, you can do that. And also praying upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam continuously and profusely. 
as much as possible. So dhikr, there's no end to it. You can do as much dhikr as you want. Uh, could you explain ta'weez, how it works? I have a, I, if I have a ta'weez, how can I get checked by? If you find ta'weez in your house, should you, what should you do with it? People say you have ta'weez, but it has Allah's Quranic verse. It's okay to wear a drink. How do we tell our elders? Now, the thing with ta'weez, you know, you'll hear different scholars say different things. Um, my personal own opinion, uh, from what I've seen, is I think it's better to avoid it. Um, because, um, or very often, uh, there might be genuine people, but there's lots of charlatans out there. And what happens is, they will fill you by writing some verses of Quran, and then they'll write something which you can, it's an, you know, looks like Arabic, but it's actually like a name of a jinn or something. And so it's um, deception, yeah? And they usually look quite pious, so they'll have like, you know, a big turban on, big beard, and you know, look very holy. Um, so it's all there to <coughs> deceive you. And uh, that way you don't know what they've given you and you're wearing it. Whereas if you read the Quran yourself, or you get water and read Fatiha on the water and drink it, or read the verses of Shifa, the six verses of Shifa on the water and read it, or read anything from the Quran on the water, then at least you know you read it. You know what you read. You give it to someone else, you don't know what they're going to read. You don't know if you know you don't know if they're genuine or not. And we're living in time, times of deception, right? And this stuff is widespread. So the safest thing is that you uh, you you. Um, uh, Take it upon yourself to protect yourself. That's my own personal perspective. Um, other ulama say that, you know, as long as there's no shirk in it, if it's Allah's names and uh, verse of Quran, um, I mean, th that's uh, a position. But I'm still hesitant. Personally, I'm hesitant because a lot of the times when you open these things up, you see all sorts of funny stuff in them. So uh, because of the, the, the deception of our times, it's best to stick to Quran and either listen to it, read it, that way it's safe, you cannot go wrong. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to uh, protect us, ourselves from uh, the evil eye and also from sihr, and give us strong iman insha'Allah. And anyone who's affected, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifts the effects of it and gives everyone shifa. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslimin kathira. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.